Who doesn't love dirty dancing? But is there a Patrick Swayze curse? Just why did Jennifer Grey quit acting? And how deep did the feud go? Finally, what's Baby up to today? And how does she reflect on all of this? Let's find out. Sorry about the disruption, folks. But I always do the last dance of the season. As we all know, nobody puts Baby in a corner. But did you know Patrick Swayze may have wanted to? Their chemistry was bursting from the seams and the screen in 1987's Dirty Dancing. But Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze's real feelings were kind of the opposite. So why did these two not really get along? And what troubles plagued the filming of Dirty Dancing to the point that it was considered cursed? Welcome, I am your host, Nostalgic Nick, with all these answers and more. You just put your pickle on everybody's plate, college boy, and leave the hard stuff to me. Including what Gray's biggest regret regarding Patrick is. If you enjoy our video, like we sure hope you do, please just click that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a memory. But now, without further ado, it's time for that final dance. Did Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze get along? The subject of mixed feedback, 1984's Red Dawn, pushed the envelope in terms of violence as it was first released with a PG-13 rating. And it surprised everyone with the box office earnings it netted. Because yeah, Red Dawn is awesome. Wolverines! And it also first introduced Jennifer Grey to Patrick Swayze, with Grey playing Tony Mason and Swayze, Jed Eckert. This was the first taste for how these two would gel, and it is informative for us about why they clashed. While promoting her memoir, incredibly titled Out of the Corner, Grey told The View, quote, Patrick was playing pranks on me and everybody. It was just like macho and I just couldn't take it. I was just like, please, this guy, that's enough with him. On top of that, during the cast's eight-week training program, Patrick did the entire thing in character and bossed everyone around a lot. So was this an outlier or a sample of how Patrick was with all his colleagues? Rob Lowe called his outsiders and young blood colleague intense, especially when it came to his active lifestyle. Patrick supposedly told Lowe to call him Buddy, his old high school nickname, but he never did. Even so, when Patrick passed, Lowe said he basically lost a brother. What was controversial about Dirty Dancing? The iconic pairing of Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze helped make Dirty Dancing a cultural phenomenon, with their performances earning incredible praise. But the leading faces almost looked entirely different. For one thing, the original choices for Frances Baby Houseman included Sharon Stone, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Winona Ryder. And I do think they all could have done decent jobs, but casting went to Grey, who was 26 while filming to play that 17-year-old baby, thanks to a little help from Grey's dad. I don't know how many people know this, but your father is Joel Grey, and I've known Joel for years. How is it? Yeah. Film producer Linda Gottlieb shared, quote, Jennifer Grey was pushed into the audition room by her father, and we were in love. As she walked in, she said, wish me luck, daddy, and she just closed the baby's face in my mind. And from that moment on, she was the only person I wanted. Now with baby cast, Jennifer was the one any hopeful actors would have to work opposite if they wanted that chance to play the film's other lead. And this was vital to getting the movie we all know and love over 35 years later. Titanic's Billy Zane was one of the top choices to play Johnny, but this plan quickly fell through. His screen test with Grey just did not work. The next choices were Benicio Del Toro and Val Kilmer. Kilmer actually turned down the role. I mean, wow. I do think Val could have done an incredible job, but then, Finally came Patrick Swayze, who had already worked with Grey in 1984's Red Dawn. Did Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze have a good relationship? Grey was very unabashedly upset at the idea of working with Patrick again. In fact, according to Bergstein, quote, she begged us to have anyone but Patrick. Yeah, not a promising start to the project. 
but that road just got bumpier from there. Last month, I'm, I'm eating juju bees to keep alive. This month, women are stuffing diamonds in my pockets. They both had something of a dancing background. Of course, that's why they were cast. But Gray's was more limited to lessons from years prior. So Jennifer actually struggled to keep up with the film's high demands and with Patrick Swayze, who can just do anything. And Jennifer being behind the curve apparently got on Patrick's nerves. He would even talk about that in his memoir, The Time of My Life. He wrote, quote, She'd slip into silly moods, forcing us to do scenes over and over. One example of this that actually stays in the final cut was when Johnny runs his hand sensually down Baby's arm and then she giggles. Well, that's just a case of Jennifer not being able to stop laughing again and again across 20 takes. The more they filmed, the more annoyed Patrick got, and the director just had to leave it in there because Jennifer's giggles were not going away. Why did Jennifer Grey quit acting? There were other problems that plagued Dirty Dancing's filming schedule including Mother Nature herself. First, the crew couldn't film at either of the two resorts used in the film until all the guests were cleared out. And by that time, it was autumn, so all those summer scenes were really shot in the fall. To fix the illusion a bit, the art department had to spray leaves green to turn back the clock. When they did get to filming, Gray's on-screen mom was absent more than present and ended up recast. Patrick Swayze triggered an old knee injury and needed fluids drained. If that wasn't gross enough, food poisoning, heat stroke, broken toes, and ladder falls. I'm kind of terrified to ask what more can go wrong. According to Gray, all this helped make her even less willing to work with Patrick, who supposedly added to the problem by arriving late to set. It really was a powder keg for all sorts of castmate clashes. Against all odds, the perfect storm wasn't enough to scare Jennifer away from acting. In fact, instead of the one-hit wonder kind of deal we often see, she does have some more popular credits to her name. You know, like Red Belt, The Wind Rises, and Bittersweet Symphony. We last saw her on the big screen in this year's A Real Pain. And she's also done a ton of TV work. Episodes of Friends, Fallen Angels, House, Grey's Anatomy, and of course, even Dancing with the Stars. Do you love me? Of course, season 11 saw none other than Jennifer Grey, baby herself crowned champion, but a good chunk of these victories nearly never happened. For one thing, Grey wasn't even able to enjoy Dirty Dancing's monumental success because tragedy struck. Or should I say, they struck tragedy. She and her boyfriend, actor Matthew Broderick, were on vacation when they swerved their car into the wrong lane. They struck another vehicle and killed the mom and daughter in that other car. Needless to say, Grey was racked with survivor's guilt and would be plagued by chronic neck problems decades after. For a bit, Grey wanted to just step away from the limelight to be with her grief. What is Jennifer Grey doing now? Nowadays, Grey keeps things pretty candid. In 2022, she released her memoir, Out of the Corner. And along the way, she's been unafraid of telling her story. And that includes the less glamorous parts. She once got two nose jobs that set the stage for a bunch of rumors that she was rejected from Hollywood, but it was actually more the opposite. Speaking about this, Gray admitted, quote, I spent so much energy trying to figure out what I did wrong, why I was banished from the kingdom. That's a lie. I banished myself. As her memoir title suggests, Dirty Dancing is never far from her thoughts, and neither is the man she shared the spotlight with. When promoting that book back in 2022, Gray admitted, quote, I actually just had a thought about Patrick. I feel like if I could say anything to him now, I would say, I'm so sorry that I just couldn't appreciate and luxuriate in who you were, instead of me wishing you were more like what I wanted you to be. You better believe what we saw on screen in Dirty Dancing was lightning in a bottle. One of the most iconic couples fueled by natural chemistry and a stained history. There was tons of tension and all of it was held together by a love that's hard to understand. 
but also kind of makes perfect human sense at the same time. It was perfect, it was magical, it was dirty. So what was your favorite moment in Dirty Dancing? Have you also seen those two in Red Dawn? Has anyone visited either resort it was filmed at? And yeah, I've actually been there, it's beautiful. Well please, get in the comments and tell us all things Dirty Dancing and all things Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze. If you enjoyed our video, like I sure hope you did, please hit that thumbs up icon to show our channel some support. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our latest episode. But most importantly, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you very much for watching.